Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Derek Anang, and I would like to welcome you to the 2021 Gene Harris Jazz Festival, Virtual Edition. Our continuing mission to support comprehensive music education at Boise State University and provide enrichment opportunities for our community and schools is only possible through the support of our patrons, community, and university. Thank you for empowering us. Today is a very special event. It consists of a mini concert and an interview. I'm gonna be speaking with two Boise State University music alum who are both producing music in the jazz and commercial music scene. They were both able to use their time at Boise State University to launch into exciting career paths and produce fantastic music that we will get a chance to hear that today. So I'd like to first introduce Mr. Jared Knight. Jared Knight is a composer, pianist, and computer musician with a hankering for crunchy harmonies, glitch, and soundscape textures. He uses complex rhythmic vamping and plays keys for emergency stopping only. He makes an excessive number of puns during rehearsals, as do we all. Jared is currently at the University of Oregon pursuing his master's degree in intermedia music technology. Now that's cool. Um, over in the left corner, we have Mr. Colin McFadden and Colin is the man behind Spenvax. He is also the man behind the drums in the band Emergency Stopping Only, a self-proclaimed rhythmic illusionist. He is a conveyor of heavy polyrhythms, tasty beats and electronic soundscapes. Colin is currently a freelance music professional in the Treasure Valley and the galaxy beyond. Welcome Jared, welcome Colin. How are you guys doing? Thank Good. You well. How are you doing? Doing very, very well. And I realize I set you up to talk at the same time right from the get go. So I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question for both of you, and I guess I will, uh, I will direct traffic a little bit. So we'll start with Jared. And uh, my, my first question for you is, what have you been doing since leaving Boise State? What are you passionate about right now? Uh, so as you mentioned, I'm working on my master's degree at University of Oregon. Um, that's been keeping me pretty busy. Uh, the other main thing that I've been doing right now is working with Colin and a few other musicians, um, most of, actually all of which are Boise State alum um, on our band Emergency Stopping Only. Um, and it's been great. It's been one of the most satisfying musical experiences that I've ever had, being able to collaborate with such great musicians on such a consistent basis. Fantastic. Who are some of those other alum who you're working with? Uh, so besides Colin, there's also Lenny Escobar, Keandra Harris, Joe Warnicky, Kevin Luttrell, and Keegan Saunders. Awesome. That's Kevin awesome. and Keegan are our newer additions to the to the group. Awesome. Cool. And Colin, what about you? What are you passionate about right now? What have you been up to since you've uh, departed? Well, uh, I've been staying busy working, trying to, uh, you know, actually make money now that I'm not in school. <laughs> and aside from that, uh, just working on a bunch of Spenvax projects. And also, as Jared just said, working with Emergency Stopping Only. Uh, we've got a couple of things in the works, including an album release right now. So did a lot of the uh, mixing for that. And that took up a, lot, a few months of my time uh, this past year. And aside from that, um, just trying to build the uh, musical platform we've got going. So That's fantastic. Um, where, where would we have heard Emergency Stopping Only had there not been a pandemic in the last six months? Uh, uh, most likely over at U of O. Uh, we have a lot of, actually, I think we've had maybe most of our performances at U of O. Um, what was the uh, festival? We've also we been to play at uh, Ming Studios. Yes, and Ming Studios. We had a uh, thing set up to be playing there uh, mm -hmm. before pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. So Colin, you mentioned you're the man behind Spenvax. So what, tell us about what, how do you, what is that title? And what is Spenvax? Uh, Spenvax is kind of an alter ego situation where when I'm drumming for emergency stopping only, I'm Colin McFadden and otherwise I am Spenvax. And I think I just gave away my superhero identity now. So I got to <laughs> change that. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just an electronic project that I started while I was at BSU and just kept going with it and now it just turned into just a musical persona that um just rolling with so awesome um okay so the next question i want to ask is a, a boise state university specific question so a lot of our audience watching 
right now are um, either current or potential or future Boise State University music students. And so um, I'm gonna, I'll start with Colin this time, but I wanna ask you, what was one of your most meaningful experiences that you had while you were here at Boise State? I'd say one of my most meaningful experiences, if not being biased and saying, starting to play with emergency stopping only, I'd probably say working with uh, a former composition professor named Dr. Richards and really he just helped me with understanding what being a musician is in the worldwide scope of things not just in the academic world and a lot of what I learned from him has carried with me today and I would say that that was the most meaningful yeah awesome so uh if if we could get a little bit more personal, what what is one of those things that you learned that you could teach us right now? Ooh, <laughs> I'd say to not get wrapped up in the the notes and the academic side of music. Um, I guess, for lack of better terms, try not to be pretentious about what I'm doing and just try to be, try to focus on the fun aspect of music and not so much on trying to impress others. Got it. Awesome. Okay. So Jared, your turn. Meaningful experience, Boise State University. Yeah. Um, so, you know, echoing what Colin said, working with Dr. Richards was awesome. Um, also working with uh, Professor of composition who preceded him. Uh, Dr. Biedenbender was, was great. They're both incredible mentors. Um, they both were very encouraging um, about um, expanding not only what I'm writing and what I'm playing, but also just like what I'm listening to. Um, and that's been really informative in my growth as a musician, um, and working with, uh, especially with Dr. Richards, um, I started getting more into electronic music, um, the, uh, second semester that he was teaching there, I, did a piece for piano and electronics. Um, and I used samples from Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Um, and that was that was really enjoyable. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I think that, you know, what uh, one common thing that um, a lot of people I've been interviewing for the festival this year have said um, when I asked them about their experience in school is that they said one of the most positive experiences other than you know, specific um, professors that they've interacted with have been um, creating the networks and meeting the other people who are like their peers for whom they will collaborate with later. And I know definitely a, a common thread um, amongst those who I've interviewed who are further along in their careers have been, you never know who you're going to work with. And a lot of times the people who you're, you know, rubbing shoulders with while you're in school end up being people you collaborate with. And I think that, you know, you're, you guys are just scratching the surface of that emergency stopping only was, I think, a birds through Boise, Boise State University in a manner of speaking. So I think that's awesome. Um, so a related question, and we'll stick with Jared for this one, and then we'll jump to Colin, is <clears throat> what advice would you give to current freshmen at Boise State University or at any music school? Um, and or what advice would you have given yourself as a freshman now that you know what you know now? Um, I, would, I would definitely say, um, I would tell myself to avoid um, trying to impress people. I would strongly recommend to current students to genuinely explore their interests, um, whether that's in classical music or jazz or um, or some genre of pop music. Um, there are so many different avenues that 
a person can take in our society with music um, that I think relegating oneself to one specific kind of music can be a, a mistake. Uh, for instance, um, for, for several years, I was kind of on this one track mindset of um, I've got to write academic music, got to write academic music. Um, and I, I feel like I really started to kind of break out of that with emergency stopping only, um, which is uh, something that uh, Colin and I and, and Lenny put together. And being something that I was genuinely interested in and um, very invested in, um, and, and still am, uh, it's um, made a big difference in, in how I feel uh, about music, about how I feel about the, the possibility of pursuing careers in music, and uh, especially outside of academia. Um, and uh, there was one thing, uh, one other thing I was going to have to say, but I totally forgot what it was. So I guess it wasn't really that important. Huh. Well, I'm sure you, you can jump in once you remember it, but I'm going to flip this one back to Colin now. And so advice you would give to yourself as a freshman. Fight to get what you want out of your education. Awesome. Next question. No, Eric, <laughs> do you remember what you were going to say? <laughs> no. All right. We're going to fight to remember, but I think that's a, that's a powerful statement that uh that i've been championing as well is that you know your your education is yours and that in the the changing market landscape of whatever career you end up being um you know you need to be aware of the the skills and experiences um that you have to have in order to get where you want to go and oftentimes the structures that we've created in academia are are meant purely as foundational and not necessarily as transformational in that way but there is plenty of ways you can transform, um, you know, your your education to something that will really help you beyond the major, as both Colin and Jared have done in their own unique, different ways. And so I think that you know this this brings us to another uh, interesting question I'm going to ask. And so at Boise State we have a, a a catchphrase called "Preparing Students for Careers Beyond the Major," um, BTM we call it affectionately. And uh, and so I think you know I'm going to ask, and I'll start with Colin again this time just so that we can satisfy my OCD here. And, um, <laughs> and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, you know, what is, what's one thing that you got out of Boise State that has helped you to do the things that you're doing now? I am musically literate. <laughs> hey, we like that. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. What was your experience when you first, uh, when, they, when we first started shoveling literacy down your throat and now? Oh boy. Uh, well, when I first started, I had literally no idea what I was doing. Uh, I never had any music education beforehand, uh, before Boise State, and so I just got to Boise State, and it was like, take this entry-level theory course and then jump right into collegiate education of music, and then it's just like, okay, let's do this. So it was very minimal sleep and a lot of caffeine, and now I'm on the other side of it, and I can read music. <laughs> hey. Seems to be the great formula. <laughs> you know, it's everything is the the beauty of uh, music literacy is that we we can write everything down at least in an approximate way, and it helps us to organize and communicate what we're doing. Um, but I think that both of you have also kind of identified that uh, that relying on that as the sole record of how things should be is something that can totally suck the soul out of what we do too. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jared. Uh, can you remind me what the question is? Sorry. Certainly. So the question was, what's one thing that you did at Boise State that helped prepare you for what you're doing now? Um, let's see. I think, uh, so, you know, I, I was a composition major in my undergrad. And so a lot of my um, best experiences come from that. And, uh, working on specific pieces that I wrote. Um, one of these uh, pieces 
is called Please Leave a Message After the Tone. And I, it was written for an earlier iteration of Emergency Stuffing Only. Um, and uh, I had it on my SoundCloud for a real long time. And it got like, a, you know, over, the, over a few years, like over 400 plays. But eventually I just took it down because I was like, all right, this is, I'm not satisfied with this piece anymore. Um, this doesn't represent where I am. But at the time that I wrote it, it was a real launching point um, for myself as a, as a creator. And also I think for, for our band as well. Awesome. Cool. So th this is actually another good segue too, because I, I, my next question is about your creative process. And I know that, um, you know, once those of you listening, once, once you hear what uh, the music that's about to go down, you're going to, this is going to make a whole lot of sense, but everyone kind of has their own creative process for how, especially in electronic music and intermedia for how they go about, you know, from inspiration to sketches to starting production. And so I'm interested, Jared, to hear, you know, what, what does your uh, creative process look like do you have some standard things that you do or is it just kind of like free for all? Talk to us a little bit about your process. Uh, yeah, so when I'm making electronic music specifically, um, I always start out with doing a bunch of sampling. Um, I will find just you know stuff around the house and do recording sessions by myself um, just trying to get whatever sounds out of these objects that I can, um, and that that sound interesting to me. You know the timbres or um, different tones that I can get out of them. Like for instance, um, I've sampled things like a flower pot, um, uh, a metal watch band. A uh, I took a sample of me popping my neck. Um, and uh, so I start with these, I start with samples, and then I just kind of start putting things together, not really knowing where I'm going to be going. Um, and eventually, you know, after kind of wading through the mud a little bit, I kind of get a, an idea or a trajectory of where I'm going to take the, the song. Um, and, and I go from there. Are you using Ableton or how, what are you doing for samples? Uh, yeah, I use Ableton, and then um, I open up the the recordings in Ocean Audio, and I take out little snippets of the waveform and normalize them, clean them up a little bit, and stuff like that. Awesome. Okay, now Colin, tell us about your creative process. It's highly variable. Yeah. Okay, tell us uh, about the creative process for Sunbiter. Sunbiter. Oh boy. A lot of it started with learning how to use synthesizers of different varieties. There was uh, one synthesizer that I started using. There was a digital synthesizer. I uh, learned how to use that. That was a lot of the sounds on Sunbiter. But then you know about the other synthesizer that I started using, mm -hmm. which was the ARP 2600 there at BSU. Um, I did a an independent study and in my independent study, my goal was to learn how to use that ARP 2600. And so that thing was built in the seventies, but the instruction manual for that synthesizer is the coolest thing ever, man. That's like, it is, so normally you read instruction manuals, it's like totally dry. Like it's just step-by-step, step, okay, go do this, then go do that. But this instruction manual is like somebody actually talking to you like, you make this sound that you might get some like recollection of, you know, walking down the ocean path or something, you know, something like that. But I don't know, it's just a really good read. But then, uh, so going back to your question, the process of just learning how to make sounds would turn into me improvising with those sounds, which might uh, which I might just throw into a folder somewhere and then just sit on for you know up to a year or something but then I'll be working on a beat or like you know make a loop and then all of a sudden that sound that I made 
however long ago will pop into my head and be like, oh, I need to go find that. And then implement that into the track. And then next thing I know, I've got a full track, you know, a couple of days later with just, I don't know, I don't know how it works, man, but uh-huh. <laughs> it just kind of happens that way. Uh-huh. Um, awesome. <laughs> and w- one thing is that when I get stuck and I'm not really sure, so that's something that happened really happens every time after I release a larger project is, you know, I've got this kind of peak and valley situation where I release this big project and then kind of just go down this thing where, well, now what am I going to do? And something that always works for me is sampling to where I'll just like carry a handheld uh, microphone and just go for a walk and anytime I hear something that's interesting, record it. Um, I'll be at my parents' house and it's like helping them with the project. And then someone will bump something and be like, hey, do that again. And then, you know, record it. And really, after I just get this big, large pool of samples built up again, then I don't know, I figure I sleep a bunch. My brain does some sort of crazy mathematics and tells me what to write. So. <laughs> That's really, that's really cool. And it's, there's like a distinct parallel too, between like, uh, like jazz improvisation, where we're like, we'll listen, we'll listen to a ton of music, and listen to a ton of material. And our brain is basically creating this library of of information that we have. And then when it's time to improvise, we're like, drawing upon all these things in rapid fire. Um, Yeah, that's that's another huge portion. Yeah, is listening to other music for sure. Mm -hmm. And so for those watching, um, J- Jared, of course, piano player and Colin, primarily a drummer, um, but they all do a lot of other really cool, interesting things. So um, what I want to do now is we're going to play uh, two, two pieces of music from each of them. So this is going to be our, our little concert segment. And so we're going to start with uh, two of Jared's tunes. And so Jared, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to hear? Um, the first one is going to be telekinesis. So telekinesis is a tune that I wrote for flute and fixed media electronics um it's uh pretty beat oriented um and it has a lot of those uh kinds of samples that i mentioned earlier um and so uh, in the beginning i uh it's uh kind of got this changing meter um that uh is is like consistent but still is like Uh, oh um and then in the middle it's kind of ethereal and then at the end it's like this long build up into into like the the ending segment um and i wrote it uh for my friend sarah jordan who is a composer and flutist um and she as far as i'm concerned did a really good job with it um is a difficult piece and she pulled it off really well in the recording. So what's one thing that, uh, that our listeners could try to key in and, and look out for in telekinesis? Hmm. Uh, I think the, the development of the samples, um, uh, I was able to use um, some different plugins to um, to m- modulate and and uh, chop up and you know uh, granulate uh, samples, um, especially on the second half of the tune. And so, um, you know, you listen kind of closely. It's like, oh, I hear some of those same kind of timbres as right at the beginning, and, and so it's kind of fun because it's like tying it back in Mm -hmm. okay and then the the second one um a good crescendo is swell tell us a little bit about that yeah so that one um i designed in max msp um i created a it's so it's for max and a wacom tablet um which for those who don't know um a wacom tablet is a digital drawing tablet, um, mostly used for, by, by visual artists, uh, animators, stuff like that. Um, but 
there are uh, ways that you can use it as a controller. So I developed these um, these swells of um, saw waves filtered in different ways, and then kind of built a shape to it. And then on top of that, I was improvising these percussive sounds on the walking tablet. Very cool. And one thing for our listeners to look out for on that one. Um, I think the development and that's kind of the overall um, feeling made by the percussive improvisation. So. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So for those of you uh, watching right now, we are going to cut and we're going to hear telekinesis and a good crescendo is swell. And then we'll be back on to talk with Colin a little bit about the two pieces of his that we're going to hear. So we will see you in a moment.
So wasn't that awesome, everybody? So next up, we have two tunes by Colin McFadden down here. And so the first one, tell us a little bit about TRT. Well, TRT, um, pretty much every sound short of the drums, I think even a couple of the drums was made using that ARP 2600 synthesizer. Um, it's kind of crazy because a lot of the sounds sound like something that's digital or like modern, but it's like this 70s. It was recorded through the air too, like from the speakers on the synthesizer. Like I have no idea how it sounds so good, but. What microphone were you using to record? I was using, I think your microphone. Okay. And that, uh, just that little handheld, is it a Zoom mic yeah. or a, yeah. Okay. That was killer, dude, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> cool, so what, what happens in TRT? Uh, TRT, there's some weird time signatures. Uh, so if you're into that thing, yeah. Rhythmic <laughs> illusionary processes. I'd say some rhythmic illusionary stuff, yes. Yeah, okay, and what's one thing that our listeners should, should look out for in that? Uh, the odd times. Um, oh, you can listen for a bird flying away. Oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So and, and then tell this, me what the actual sample was of the bird flying away. Cause you'll never guess it. Okay. Those of you who are in the Audubon society, now you have your task. Um, <laughs> okay. Excellent. So the second tune we're going to hear is called post nosage. So tell us a little bit about that. Ooh, post nosage, man. That was, a. Uh, so that was something where it was a collaboration with uh, Keegan Saunders and Leonardo Escobar. Both are the saxophone players on that song. And I forgot to put the featured part in that, that title, but uh, both of them played the sax there. Um, I had some notation that I wrote for the song. And then once they learned that, I just told them to do whatever they want. And I love the result. So it's cool. awesome. So it's a, and this is a, this is a common theme too in, in recorded music and especially in jazz of like involve the best people you can in your project and give them a little bit of direction but then let them just go with it and like you know this is an ex a definitely an example of that so what's something that our listeners should key into on on this one mm, i would well there's an inside joke that you wouldn't get that uh, lenny plays in one part but there's there was another part in the peak of the song where i probably already said too much there but there was an instrument that was inspired by the movie Dreams by Akira Kurosawa. And there's a scene in that movie that I tried to directly imitate with a sound that's happening in that part of the song. So you can look for that. Okay, any of any you listeners, if you can figure that out, <laughs> and it to me we'll verify it and uh and we'll, we'll get you a prize okay no so, money <laughs> <laughs> oh no gene harris is going to give the surprise okay or the hey, prize, cool rather. okay okay that's on yeah, me. yeah yeah uh we got you covered on that so all right uh we're gonna hear trt followed by post nosage and then we'll be back with some more see you guys in a moment <laughs>
So how about that? <clears throat> two awesome pieces um, following two awesome pieces by two awesome people here. And uh, it's just an example of, the, of what you can do with music and how many careers are available to you and possibilities for creating art and creating music. And, uh, and, and both of these composers and performers, they started their journey here at Boise State University, and they're now out doing these awesome things. So um, I, I hope this has inspired many of our uh, watchers and listeners to, uh, to consider making music in many different ways, um, but also you know, really holding up to a high standard for our music literacy and those other things that we need to be able to do as professional musicians. So um, the final couple of questions I wanna ask. The first one is, what is next? What's the next project? What are you working on right now, Colin? Uh, well, musically, I'm working on working on the Emergency Stopping Only album, which we just got our album cover in from shout out Luan Teed. She uh, painted this like this actual paint and super awesome. professional, super awesome uh, artist. Glad to have worked with her. And uh, so working on that album release, which uh, we're about to go in for a crowdfunding campaign or Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. And then uh, just working on more Spendvax projects, um, kind of on the academic side of things, even though I'm not in school anymore, um, trying to work on trying to diversify the college education to our college music education specifically so that or focused more on just um, Western classical music when we're looking at theory and ear training and things like that. So that you now more well-rounded set of alumni once they leave and really prepare students more for the modern music world and get them more gigs, you know, so. Awesome. I can't wait to talk more about that with you. Um, so Jared, other than Emergency Stopping Only, but you're also working on that album right now. Um, what other things are you working on right now? Uh, pretty soon. Uh, well, uh, right now, more stuff for ESO uh, for our next album. You know, kind of already thinking ahead for that. Um, and pretty soon I'm going to be starting my terminal project for my studies at University of Oregon. Um, I'm going to um, make, uh, create, uh, mix and master um, an entire album of electronic music from the ground up um, as, as my project. So see how that goes. Um, and then uh, doing some of the same kinds of uh, education kinds of things with, with Colin. So. Awesome. Yeah, can't wait to see what else you guys come up with. So um, question just popped into my head, but that uh, I definitely want to ask, because there, uh, you, you both come have such a diverse musical background and musical interests. And both of you have said um, in, you know, in, in some words or another throughout this interview that a big part of, uh, of becoming a, a musician and a creative artist is being literate and, and listening and knowing and being exposed to and having your mind be open. And so I want to ask uh, if you could give us maybe off the top of your head, it's going to be a hard question, but three artists and or albums that you would suggest that our listeners go and check out right now. I'll start with you, Jared. Uh, um, well, I think uh, th three of the artists that I've been kind of digging on most, you know, for the last year or two just kind of have have these albums on on repeat um immigrants by snarky puppy um i would say by nick bearish's ronin they're a, a swiss jazz quartet and uh little big by aaron parks he's a pianist and um he's got a combo and all really good albums okay everybody check those out colin i know you got something going here <laughs> uh so my first would be malika tarolian um she recently put a challenge out with uh part of her song change your life to have uh, folks solo over that section of her song and it's dude it's like the most <laughs> i don't even have words for it man like oh it's you know all the things i love odd times jazz just like prog rock even to, almost to the point of metal, like in the middle of this just amazing song. And 
yeah, her album Higher, uh, it's on there. Uh, check that out. Um, Rap Ferreira, that is R A P Ferreira. Those are actually his initials. Um, he is a hip hop artist slash poet who used to be known as Milo, and he re released his first major project as Rap Ferreira, uh, Purple Moonlight Pages, and it's just it's like if you were to call something art rap or art hip hop, like that's it for sure. Like it's just so, so creative and so inspired by jazz and man, it's something else entirely, um, way ahead of its time. And lastly is Luzmila Carpio. I'm hopefully not just butchering this whole name and album title, but Yuye Japina Tapes. And it is, oh, where is she from? Um, Jared, do you remember where she's from? Uh, Bolivia, does that sound right? Yeah. I don't think it's Bol Bolivia. It's one of those other places down there. Somewhere in South America. Yes. Yeah. Please excuse me for not remembering, but the, it's just music like I've never heard before, man. Like I didn't even know music like that existed. The, like the range um of her voice it is the largest range i've ever heard of any singer ever and uh, jared was telling me she employs this technique in her high range what is it like uh you said it was like flute singing or something or oh uh like whistle tone yeah whistle tone and she'll go from you know somewhere around my range right now all the way up into that whistle tone while she's singing uh, alongside you know harmonizing with the other instruments and it is amazing man that combined with just the perfect timing of all the guitars and percussion and it's it blows me away man like absolutely awesome. incredible man i i love hearing <clears throat> what everyone is is digging and in fact colin you need to write these down i know that jared is writing them down for me um so that i can I can listen to them. And I know that some of my listeners, our listeners here are going to say, what was the name of that thing? Um, so we can send it to them. But so yeah, cool. thank you guys for sharing that. And um, so we're wrapping this up. Um, and I, the, the final thing I want to do is uh, I want to ask Colin and Jared to tell us um, how we can find them on the internet and on social media and how, what we can do to help support them. Um, so let's, I'll start with Jared and say, you know, what are your tags? What are the addresses? Let me have it. And we'll post a, a slide at the end of this with this information on it too. Yeah. So um, basically anything that ends with Jared L. Knight uh, is me. So facebook.com slash Jared L. Knight. Instagram, Jared L. Knight. Um, my website is Jared L. Um, <laughs> so I've been fortunate to have that consistency. Um, and then if you want to find um, our band, Emergency Stopping Only, uh, the website is esofunk.com. And then uh, we're also on Instagram and Bandcamp under Emergency Stopping Only. Okay. Colin. You can find me. Uh, well, you can only really find Spendvax online. Uh, that is just everywhere. I don't use Twitter, but... You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, um, under just, just at Spenvax. And in the future, you'll be able to find something else, Sunbiter Records, but we'll talk more about that later. Oh. Um, that'll just be sunbiter.com. Okay. But in the meantime, just Spenvax. Cool. So look for, uh, look for the, the new Emergency Stopping Only album at some point in the future. That's going to be awesome. And look for their their crowdfunding campaign to drop soon. And uh, again, I can't wait to see the kinds of things that both of you are going to come up with and other of our alum from Boise State University in these cool collaborations. And uh, frankly, I want to collaborate with you guys. And uh, so, you know, let's, let's get this thing done. Um, so uh, yeah, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and, uh, and hearing what Colin and Jared have been up to and what you might be able to be up to should you come to Boise State University and, uh, and fight for your education. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna uh, sign us off here. So Jared, Colin, thank you so much. Uh, have a good rest of your afternoon. Hey, thank you, thank Dr. G. You Super appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity. 
Anytime. Yeah, for sure. See you, everybody. See you yeah. later.